Do you like collecting and playing physical games like these? If you do, then we got a very special treat for you, because we're going to be taking a look at the re-release and collector's edition of Assault Suits Valken. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. There are so many games that I wish I'd bought when I was younger and they were cheaper. Now many of these games cost more than the original hardware that used to play them. And so whenever there's a chance to pick up a brand new re-release, a collector's edition of a game or a new indie title for classic hardware, I take it. I love physical gaming. I get a real kick out of these old cartridges and plastic boxes. And so in this week's show, it won't surprise you that we have another re-release that we're going to be taking a look at. And this time, we have a deluxe edition and a standard edition, but there's only a limited time available for you to get your hands on them. Retrobit are back with a physical game of a quality that only Retrobit can produce. Assault Suits Falcon comes in two flavours and is available to order now, with pre-orders ending on the 5th of November. Both versions have all the censored content added back in alongside improved English translations and content that was originally cut from the game. The deluxe edition comes with gold carts, a limited number hardback cover box, a full colored manual, embossed collector's slipcase, a soundbites keychain, a commemorative coin and an acrylic Vulcan stand. And then there's the standard edition, which comes with a bronze cartridge, a limited number hardback cover box, and a coloured manual. So now we know what the physical goodies are, let's take a look at the game. So this is already off to a great start. I love mech stuff. Ever since I got into Robotech back as a kid, I love all this kind of stuff. Space, mechs, explosions, awesome. Now, I've never played this game. I was more of a Mega Drive fan. If you know anything about this channel, you'll know how much I love the Sega Mega Drive. But I did have a Super Nintendo. But a lot of the stuff I was playing on the Super Nintendo were things like RPGs, loved playing the Link series, Mario games. Uh, and it wasn't my biggest collection. You know, I had about maybe 10, 15 games in total by the end for my Super Nintendo. But for my Mega Drive, I had 60, 70 games. Uh, and that really was my console of the choice. Which means that I missed out on a ton of great games that came out for the Super Nintendo, including this one. So I'm going to play through probably the first level, give you a sense of what this game is like and hopefully help you make up your mind whether you're going to get your hands on the collector's edition of this awesome looking game. Right, let's jump into it. Let's have a quick look in options. Always got to have a, uh, a browse around the options. Okay, so we can change our controls. Uh, we've got name entry, uh, messages. Let's go fast. Um, love the characters, by the way. Again, I'm getting uh, lots of vibes of, of Macross Robotech in this. Uh, which is right up my street. Right, we've got uh, a mission. Right, we're going to skip this little bit of intro text here. Get straight into the game. Ooh, cutscenes. Nice big spaceship as well. Love all these, uh, these cutscenes they have. You could really tell the sign of a quality game back in the 90s if they had decent cutscenes in there, good storyline, you know, they'd taken the time to get some narrative into the gameplay as well. And whilst we're spoilt with it now with modern games, it, it was something that was missing from quite a few of the big games back in the day. That's awesome. 
smashing into a massive city spaceship. Right, hang on, what have I got? Shoot. Okay, I've got 360 uh, or, or eight, degree, uh, eight degrees, eight directions of, of fire. Um, punch, fire, dash, jump, it looks like. Okay, let's get into it. Oh, bit of storyline here. Again, love all this like attention to detail that they, they put in there. Really kind of sets the scene for the whole game. Got some nice particles up there. Well, that's quite nice. If you hold down the button, your backpack boosts you up. And you get some resistance the higher you get, which is very cool. Alright. Give me something to shoot. That looks like there's something I can shoot there. Other robots. Ooh, love the explosions. Very nice. Other mechs. That mech reminds me of... Um, oh, what was, what's the uh, terrible fighter game? Um, oh, I'll think of it in a minute. You know the one I mean. Rise of the Robots. With the loader. The green loader. With these flamethrowers, guns. Again, love the explosion. Sound effects are really nice. Yeah, that reminds me of the loader in Rise of the Robots. What a terrible fighting game that was. Actually, I wonder if I should be punching those guys. Yeah. Punching is the way forward. I love the dash as well. Again, a lot of those mechs games in the 90s had dash. Uh, Front Mission, one of my all-time favourite mech games. Strategy game, that one. Uh, they had dash in that as well. Very cool. Oh, power up there. Power chip. Nice. There's some really lovely pixel art in this as well. Like this gun up here, this red gun here, reminds me of the kind of pixel art quality that you get in something like Metal Slug. Not the whole game. The whole game hasn't got a Metal Slug vibe to it. But just that, uh, that bit of artwork there. All the little kind of attention to details to the wiring and tubes and ventilation ports on it. Kind of feels a bit like Metal Slug. It's really nice. You know, the robot's slow, but it actually feels quite good. With that dash as well. Let's just punch him. That's it. I haven't got time to read on the screen what's uh, what's going on in the storyline. But it's cool they've got it. Let's take out these guys. It's very nice. It feels very good. Visually, it's very pleasing. Especially those sound effects when things blow up. Oh, there's a little guy down there. Can I shoot him? Oh! I didn't notice that before. I'm doing damage. I'm doing damage to the ground when I shoot it. That's cool. Very nice. Now, obviously, the retro bit version of this, it, they've got added content, like I said, back into this. They've got some uh, profile pictures. There's some, uh, some of the game was censored. They put that back in there. Uh, translations back in there. And, of course, they got that collector's edition it looks awesome. We've got that robot in there. There's a, a ton of other little things you get with the um, with the collector's edition. So if you're a fan of the Super Nintendo or fan of these this game or these types of games, definitely consider getting the uh, the collector's edition. Oh, end a level boss. Oh, this looks like I've got a. Uh, this looks time sensitive. There's nothing like a time sensitive level to get the uh, heart going. Oh, first part done. Let's see if we can take this guy out. Getting hit with a lot of other guns here. Respawning guns. All right. The, the platforms here are a little slippery. So I'm guessing if I get something wrong... Oh, I'll go off. Oh. Very cool. 
Mission complete. I gotta say, after playing the first level, really impressed. Love the presentation, love the audio in it, the explosions are great, the controls feel nice, really nice level design as well. Multi tiered level, so you can make your way through it, you can take out everything, or you can choose to go through a quicker route, conserve your energy for that end of level boss. Really, really nice. Right, let's talk a little bit more about the game and what exactly you get from Retrobit with this re-release of what looks and feels like an awesome game for the Super Nintendo. I kind of got an inkling that I'd love this game as soon as I saw the front cover. Mech, anime, space, all the things that I love. But it's not easy getting a mech game right. You need to get pacing, visuals and sound all working harmoniously with each other. And from what I've played so far, Assault Suits Falcon achieves this. Level design is varied and keeps gameplay fresh with slower exploratory levels, faster on rail sections and blisteringly fast auto-scrolling levels. There are also different weapons and power-ups to collect and help vary the combat gameplay. It's also a beautiful looking game and leans into the extra power the Super Nintendo had. And the musical score along with the sound effects don't disappoint and help ground you in the universe the game's designers have created. Now I know that these collector's editions aren't for everyone, but if you enjoy physical gaming, you love collector's editions, you're a fan of the game or the Super Nintendo, then this may just be for you. Again, I can't fault Retrobit's quality when it comes to these collector's editions and re-releases of games. I've got so many of their Sega Mega Drive collector's edition games and re-releases, and every single one of them have been absolutely fantastic in terms of quality. Now, if you'd like to order either deluxe edition or the standard edition, you can do that by clicking on the link that I have in the description below. And that's all we've got for this week's show. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and you're new to the channel, it'd be great if you could drop down and click on the little subscribe button. It helps grow this channel. And if you come back time and again to see what we create here, it'd be great if you can continue supporting the channel by sharing the video, hitting that little like button, and dropping down into the comments below and letting me know what you think of these collector's editions and re-releases coming out from Retrobit. Mm -hmm.